Super 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 Who apologizes more, Japanese or Canadians? Canadians are just Japanese, Japanese. 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 But, but Canadians mean it right. more when they say it. <laughs> oh! Here's another episode of Culture Table, where we have the funny conversations you never thought you'd get to have, but that you need to have. This episode is all about Japan. So we're talking to stand-up comedian Fumi Abe and filmmaker Ryosuke to talk about Japanese culture. This one gets deep as we touch on the controversial history, the complexities of Japanese culture, and robots. We have arrived at Devel, which is sort of the most well-known Japanese Western Eastern brunch spot in all of this area. Fumi, cool. yes. Can you, uh, you please tell us what, what, okay. what are we looking at? I want to be honest with you. Okay, so some of the stuff I'm very familiar with, some of the stuff is uh, a Devel original, okay? Like this one, for example, yo, natto and cheese on, a, on bread, toast, that, is innovative shit right there. I've never seen anything like that. That's uni udon spaghetti. I've never actually had that before because uni is very expensive. It's a delicacy. What's good? It is. Um, you guys know the history. Yeah, so Japanese curry actually came over when the Brits came over. So, you know, British colonized everybody. They had India and then they brought their ships from India oh. into Japan. They're like, yo, we have curry, we have spices, let's bring it in. Is, is this during the last samurai times? It is during the last samurai times, yeah. essentially. Do you think Japanese, cool. like, you know, not to take this discussion to that level already, but this is culture table. Mm. You think that you guys, Japanese got the freaky shit from the Dutch? Because the British got really known for that. Mm. Like Amsterdam, right? Isn't yeah. that Dutch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Like this shit. I don't know, yeah. I'm just saying. I mean, good. Yo, that, that's how Japanese people studied Western culture for like hundreds and hundreds of years. Japan yeah. was a very isolated uh, country for about 300 years. You know, they, that's that's how they studied math, you know, economics, probably even sex books they probably read from the Dutch, you know? So I wouldn't be f surprised. So omurice is a very delicious, it's, it, it's, a, it's my childhood food. Fried rice mixed with ketchup, you can put sausage in it, you can put peas, you can put whatever you want, and then layer it on with a thin slice of egg, well cooked, uh, thick enough, not too thick, not too thin, uh, layered with a tomato sauce and ketchup, and it's it's just comfort food. And Fumi, you said this is your favorite dish. This is my favorite dish, but uh, this is also the favorite dish of like a 10 year old. So <laughs> it's like an embarrassing thing to admit, but I love it. Again, comfort food, right? It's it comfort you food. Home. Yeah, like mom used to make it for me and stuff. What's your favorite Japanese dish? Favorite Japanese You're gonna name dish? Something, name something like 85 Wagyu, uh, Yakum <laughs> Toro, Toro <laughs> Belly. Toro. Nah, I love that premium shit, but you know, honestly, Japanese curry is my to-go too. Man. Uh, yeah, I mean, so I guess like sometime after the war, you know, even though all these crazy things happened, like Japan really accepted Western culture, and we started eating bread and all this stuff, and so this is just like a, a Japanese take on European food. You want the pizza feeling without having to toss your own dough. Exactly. Like that, I mean, this right? is probably very offensive to Italian people, but I love it. It's very good. So these, uh, I was uh, told that these milk toasts, these are, this is like a Japanese bread, and oh it's cooked God. in a Japanese toaster. Yo, that is good. Oh, delicious. Let's try this. Very delicious. Has that very sweet, uh, savory base to it, and a little touch of sweet. That's all you need in Japanese curry. That looks like a super... Yeah. Let's see, like, does that taste mm. European? I don't know, you know? Okay, a good omurice, rice, it's got... You know, have you, seen, have you guys seen ratatouille? You know when that guy eats that ratatouille and he has a flashback? When I eat this, I need to have a flashback of my mom hitting me. And that's, that's <laughs> when I know that it's good. A good Japanese curry is something when you eat it, just everything melts in your mouth so perfectly. The sauce is not too thick, it's very delicious, it has that sweet touch. Uh, the meat is very soft. Yo, we gotta talk about the westernization in Japan in a way. Japanese culture is funny because it's like the most beloved Asian subgroup, right? In a lot of ways globally. With and the then anime, like, cosplay, culture, sushi. There's a lot everything. of like soft power. For right, sure. and yeah, then simultaneously, I guess due to the last the history of the last 60 years or 70 years, in a way also the most hated. Mm. Yep. Right, like yeah. we always said it's the most famous and infamous, obviously, depending on which generation you're talking to. Mm. Right, right. I think for me, I came from a very unique perspective. I think, you know, from a Japanese person raised overseas, right? It allowed me to really see, also will help Japanese people think of their own history and culture too. A lot of Japanese people are very, I wouldn't say oblivious, but aren't really told the full truth about like, you know, Japanese. Uh, yeah. They try not to focus on They try not to focus on the yeah. war, they try not to vision. Well, they actively that. kind of try to wipe it from yeah, the history. Yeah, exactly. Like, it, it's, it's, it's something they're not really, wanting to be invested in, they're not something they want to remember. I think Japan, the way, the reason why Japan uh, culture is the way it is today is because of the whole post-war scene. They did some, you know, they did some messed up Atrocities. Yeah, exactly. The military took That's over, it. they, no, you know. You <laughs> atrocities. <laughs> atrocities, I meant. <laughs> Terrible atroc- atro- atrocities. Yeah, so Japan had this really defeated yeah. mentality after the war, and I think they just wanted to rebuild themselves. Japanese people- They were just like, let's just go a different direction. Yeah, they did, they did. They, <laughs> this they, isn't they, working. <laughs> they're just like, war isn't good, let's try something else. And so I think they had this 
the Japanese people have always been hardworking. They've always had this whole very homogenous society where they're very focused on looking after each other. And I think from there, they wanted to form their own unique culture. We're All about smoke. to wrap up the history section with okay, this. I'm put about, do you guys want to formally issue an apology for what went down 60 years ago? <laughs> like, yeah, 67. This is the internet, guys, not me. I don't care. Mm. I mean, I know we, like, Japanese people did a lot of messed up things, and I think, you know, I would like to apologize on behalf of, you know, all the <laughs> crap we did, you know, and I think, you know, moving forward, hopefully we can live in a more peaceful time and, you know, progress in a more prosperous time. Hey, man, you guys heard it here. <laughs> all the smoke. We sealed it. We're good. Let's talk about the food. But you know what it was? The internet wasn't going to let me get away with it. Mm, so fine. I had to do it. I think that's how I really got into kind of learning about East Asian history, colonial history. That's something I studied in college. I think I think it's important to really know what's happened in the past to really kind of move on and kind of get the facts right to be able to, for us to learn from it. You're saying you can't move past it unless we talk about it. That's why I brought yeah, it up so early. Yes, yeah. That's why I don't mind talking about it, man. It's important, to, it's important to come from different sides to think about it rather than coming from one biased section, you know. And I think yeah. that's, that's it's open. It's important to have an open dialogue, an honest dialogue and conversation to really know what's happened, yeah. to see everyone's side of it, and to kind of find a way to really get the full picture of yeah. kind of just everything. What do people go? There's no moving past that. What happened? <laughs> well then you just offer them more sushi and more Japanese Hey, more mental. I'll tell you this. Oh, there we go. I, I wasn't gonna ever, I almost said, I forgive you guys after eating this. We have one more spot to go to after that. We are actually going to an izakaya, which is funny because here we're at a Japanese brunch spot, but then we're gonna go to a Japanese izakaya, well, you know, which is more like a bar. You know what's funny? We had the heavy talk at the light brunch spot, but once we get over to the izakaya, it's gonna be like Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon. Hen, yeah. you know, back to the hentai mentai. <laughs> hey, We've been so us. deprived of this. Right. After leaving Chiba, he's like, oh my God. <laughs> Yo, that's why I had to give you the nacho cheese. Bro. <laughs> How do I say, how do I ask him if that's good in Japanese? Oishii desu ka? Oishii desu ka? Mama. Mama. <laughs> Mama. 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 Um, pretty, pretty fire. I love it. Okay. Uh, yours is the most aesthetic, but I don't know if that one's actually going to taste good. Mmm. Mm. Hey, we all got to eat the pizza one. David, okay. you are wrong. It's delicious. So you're saying it's only Mama, but you took like nine bites. <laughs> no, it's actually pretty good. It's really pretty good. Okay. I take it back. It's very good. Uh, Natto to toast. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, oh man. All right, I gotta have a bite of that. I'm too. in the You'll sauce. Like your... I'm in the sauce, guys. It got me. <laughs> Defend Natto, or do you, are you with Natto, or you're like, ah, it's not my favorite. Actually, Natto isn't really a big thing in Osaka. Oh, it's not. It's not. It's not. I it's a very that. Tokyo thing. It's a very Tokyo thing. What do you guys eat instead? We eat a lot of other stuff, a lot of street food, a lot of like uh, no. okonomiyaki, more, tepayaki, You mean more like, conventional? For breakfast? More conventionally oh, oh, delicious breakfast? things? I mean, I think this is like a like, common breakfast. It's a common breakfast in like Tokyo and all the area. Yeah. Those, like, I've never, every time I go to like, Japan, we never eat this. Oh my gosh. My mom hates it, she refuses to eat natto. Fumi's like, natto? yo, if you're not eating natto, what are you possibly eating? Uh -huh. All right, moving on with this Japanese episode of Culture Table, we are going to our second spot, Izakaya Jiraku. Kyoto Matcha IPA. So this is a matcha IPA. It is. It is produced from the producer with matcha in it. Ah! Take a look at that color. Which one are you more excited about? The melon or the matcha IPA? How familiar are you guys with this izakaya food on a scale of one to five? Um, at least with the classic stuff, I'm very familiar. You know, like the karaage and the yakitori and stuff like that. That's that's a so given. So what, what, what out of five? What out of five? Oh, how familiar? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Four, I guess. That's Very like familiar. Yeah, yeah. That's almost that salary familiar. man. Familiar. That's salary. No, salary man, you gotta yeah. be five. Like, okay. Yeah, five. Yeah, yeah. We, we gotta talk about loan words. Uh, because a lot, a lot of Japanese words are based off uh, words from other cultures, yeah. right? That they're based. Yeah. It's probably because it didn't exist in our country, so that we just started out phonetically. So, for example, yeah, right. like ice cream, we say ice cream because well, we didn't have. But it, of course, the the most famous one probably online is McDonald's, which is McDonald's. 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 <laughs> okay. So, what about other Asian words? There is a lot of uh, ancient Chinese influence in Japan. Look, a lot of Japanese will eat mabo dofu, which right. is. Exactly. Is that how you say it? Yeah, yeah. The Chinese characters are kanji, right? Kanji, yeah. Yep. And then, then you guys also have two more alphabets. What? Hiragana and katakana. Hiragana yes. and katakana, which is phonetic. phonetic. So, so katakana would be the ones we, you would use to describe westernized words, such as like tomato or like nakudonaru. Or your names. Like, but for a long time, kanji was only used for men. 
and women used Tirana. Yeah. Really? Yeah. It was super like, uh, patriarchal. Very patriarchal. <laughs> super patriarchal. Yeah. Well, that'll be so topic what? number two, but we gotta get past <laughs> the level. Like, I think it's like an education level thing. Like the educated, the scholars use the Chinese yeah. character. Right, because it's very hard to learn a new picture for a yes. new word, so right? Yes, so old school Japanese literature is all Chinese characters. You guys have two sets of outer nets yeah. and Chinese. Yeah. Kanji, that's a lot of stuff to learn. It is a lot of stuff. I mean, the who is like running this through you is right, just oh this my god. This is a good thing. Like, there's a lot of younger Japanese people. They don't know how to write all the characters because it's really hard. That, that's like a legit problem. Yeah. Right, Japanese it, people in Japan. Everybody's gonna go for the thing that caught their eye the most. Okay, this, this is a special one. one. I have the pork belly. Oh, uh, the abu abai. I'm gonna go for the uh, yakitori. Right, then I'll go for the alcoholic ramen. Mm, yeah, that's very Japanese. Fumi apologized for taking the Karage choice. <laughs> oh, <what's laughs> <you> <laughs> <about> <laughs> Who apologizes more, Japanese or Canadians? Canadians are just Japanese. Japanese, Japanese. 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 But, but Canadians mean it right. more when they say it. <laughs> oh, wow. oh, all right, guys. Oh my god. Wow. wow. The soup is it's a little spice, a little punch, and very, really well flavored. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I, right. I taste the alcohol in it. The jalapeno too. Mm. Oh man. Well, this, the momo, yeah. this momo skewer, momo chicken thigh skewers are like top 10 for me. Wow. I like, I love eating chicken thigh skewers. Yo, chicken wings, if it is a chicken wing, I don't care what's on it, I'm gonna try it. It's fire. Oh. Well, when are, you wanna try some of this broth? Yeah, I'll try some broth? of this broth, dude. I've never seen avocado on the mm. ramen, but this looks fire. Oh, that's wow. just sweet enough. That's beautiful right there. Because I've had, um, some friends who had worked in Japan or visited Japan and spent some time there who were either Japanese American or non-Japanese and uh, and they were females and they felt like obviously the patriarchy level structurally is still really really high in Japan. I mean I think to be honest Japan is still pretty far behind in terms of uh, rights between women and men. Women still don't get from maternity leave. That's why there's low, uh, there's a Japan has a really low uh, birth rate. It's because a lot right. of women don't want to take time off because they're not treated well in the company and they don't get that same opportunity. They're not getting the Google package. They're, exactly. They're, they're not. They're not <laughs> they don't get the same chance. And so that's why Japanese people are just like we're not being born anymore. Yes, but you know what the other thing is like. A lot of it has to do with like when we grow up. Like my mom didn't work growing up, right? My aunt didn't work growing up. So we grow up seeing women not working and just serving their husbands, and then we just eventually assume that that's what they're supposed to do. So there's also like a systematic thing. You guys are looking at this system, right? That obviously you guys are educated in the West, Western values, ideals. How do you balance that with just like, man, I just want to lead Japan, Japan, and that side of it. I, I don't want to touch it, and be like the one guy who became Westernized and was like, you guys need a change, versus being like. Dang, maybe we should, I could, like, I don't know, do I have a responsibility to address this or dismantle this from the inside? I think, you know, leading by example is good, you know, like, yes, if yeah. you were a CEO or, like, if you're in a position of influence, like you guys are, and, like, talking about this stuff, like, showcasing more women, like, just, just things like that, like, talking about it openly, I think helps the younger Japanese people, like, see things differently. I think, I think addressing the problem, I think that's the number one fundamental. Japanese people, you like the war, they don't like to face head on about the problems, they don't like being critical. And there's a lot of conventional people in Japan who like sticking in the old ways. And I think it's people like us who need to kind of educate that, who need to attack that, and to be like, well, we need to have a more fair and balanced society, you know? Yeah. People in Japan don't see that, it's because they are entrenched in that mindset. I'm going to eat this in, in, in uh, egg honor here, the of the next topic. egg of the black garlic ramen. In honor of the next topic that we have, I have the tomato. Okay. I, I have the egg to represent the reproduction that's not happening in Japan. <laughs> I have another yakitori, the fire pork version. The stick. What would you pick? You pick the I have a katsu because I'm not an herbivore. <laughs> oh, oh, what's good, wow. ladies? What's good? Hit me up. <laughs> hey. I just want to get your guys' thoughts. Not that you represent Japan, but you know, right you now guys, you do. You guys keep up on the news, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, what's, yeah. what's your yeah, opinion as, a, yeah. as somebody who's very, you know, like understanding of the Japanese culture, but also Western? I mean, Japanese people are very, like, self-reserved. They're very reserved. They're, Japanese culture, there's this term called komori, which is like, there. a lot of people who are not very comfortable with socializing. They're not comfortable with me going out and talking to girls. And that's why you have a lot of guys who are still virgins in the 30s and 40s who live without having sex in their lives because there's this culture of just not wanting to be... And that's why this idea of, like, sex dolls is a real thing in Japan is because they'd be more comfortable interacting with a video game girlfriend where they have more control over... They're getting very advanced out there. Exactly. I think there needs to be a better awareness. There needs to be a better, better systems in place for pe guys to be able to just go out there and meet girls and just like just go on dates. So you're saying you're saying dating 
the holographic Sailor Moon is not a viable option. You you gonna judge everybody? I'm Who not, wants to marry no, I'm a not hologram? Judging, but at this rate, we're not gonna have a population anymore if this keeps going. You know, and Japan is not a country of immigrants. It's it's okay. very it has a very low tolerant immigration. All right, I'm gonna. You say you say robots and humans. No, I wanna. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Like I think the culture allows you to be kind of a hikikomori, like you said earlier, like a lonely person because you can just buy these experiences. You could rent a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. There are like prostitution things available if you seek that. There are these like manga cafes that are open 24 hours if you just want to like lock yourself up and read a ton of One Piece. Live in a fantasy world. Yeah. You can do this stuff. You, so it, it's almost like why even try when you could have all this stuff to yourself? You know what I mean? It's like yeah. so ex easily accessible. You could, for a little bit of money, you can just have all these things you want. The reproduction thing, I know that is somehow like some, somewhat related to like the women working thing, right? So like more fem females are work yeah. working and they don't want to have kids because right. they want to focus on their career. So I think that's a good thing. But the solution, you know, I think uh, Japanese people, the diaspora population, like us, you know, people in California, Brazil, okay, we're. Okay, so, <laughs> you know, come, come hop on us. Come hop on our Ds. Okay. It's like I mean, a weird mix yeah. of like throwback and progressiveness and like futuristicness. But I, I mean, it's interesting because like when I think of a futuristic city, I don't even think of Tokyo. I always think of like Shanghai because I, I think it just looks like a newer city. No, you, you know? know what it is? You know what it was? For about 20 years, Tokyo was the future, but then countries that got built up after yeah, Japan so gonna are you gonna have newer but, stuff. But you know what it is? It's sort of like New York. New York was the first city to have New York looked like the future 80 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like nobody had the shit New York had. And now obviously you look at the New York subway, it looks ancient. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah it, it's, a, it's an interesting mix in Japan where their like relationship with technology is probably futuristic and like beyond everybody else. Mm -hmm. But then there's certain things that- Yeah, I always said when I went to Tokyo that it reminded me of the future in 1990. Yeah. Because yeah, they're still using, they still yeah. use money there. Like some old school things like credit cards are like kind of difficult to use and you can't pay with your phone as much. Yes. Um, what, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, is there some sense that it had ultra advanced infrastructure ahead of the rest of the world, like 10, 20, 15 years, and they kind of oh, froze it? 100%. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. No, I, I think Japan, Japan, no, definitely, it had its peak in the 80s. It had its peak in the 80s and 90s where it had this massive economic boom powered by the automobile industry. You know, I think car manufacturing really helped progress the economy. Yeah, people were like, yo, yeah. these cars don't break down, right? Exactly, and then I think that helped really fuel the advance of technology and I think research in that aspect. But I think countries like China now are the ones who are really advancing, who are really progressing and investing in that technology. I mean, not saying- I think they're hungry. I they're think they're hungry. hungry. They're hungry for it. Japan's like already eaten. Yep. So it's like right. just picking at dessert. Right. Dessert yeah. being like the arts or something like they're that. Rui Hachimura is always like, I think he felt really torn because now he's the symbol of Japanese pride in the NBA. He's this big, strong, you know, half Japanese, half black guy. He's dunking on everybody, yeah. dropping 30 in a game. But then he's also like, man, people really said a lot of mean stuff to me growing up. I think it's cool that he's on TV now and he's revered so that like mixed kids in Japan have a role model. And also other Japanese kids have a reference point. It's like, oh, that guy, he doesn't look like me, but I guess he's Japanese, so that's cool. Just have right, more open people. people's minds. So now kids are like, I'm hoping that kids are going to be like a little bit less mean, you know, yeah. to like, I, I think that that's happening. I think it's just representation, you know, how you have a lot of Asian American representation here in America. I think in Japan it's important to also acknowledge that there are non-Japanese people who are in Japan who can also be successful. And most Asian people are. How has it been tough being Japanese? Could you see if it's had any negative effect on maybe like your comedy career? On my comedy career? Uh, well, like theoretically, I'll, I'll, let me throw some out there for you. Okay. You don't have a huge backing of second generation immigrants that are going to back you. That's okay, but they'll be coming to me soon, so that's okay. I'm working on it, I'm working on it. But they do give you the bumps though. I think so. I think I, I do get Cause some Because they're like, ooh, a Japanese from, comedian. Yeah, because you just don't, I mean, you don't see a lot of Japanese people on TV specifically, but I think if there's anything negative, it's not because I'm Japanese, it's just because I'm like an Asian guy. What do you think? Like for yourself, do you, do you feel that, that same way? Like, are you like relating? <laughs> to that, like when you came here? Because obviously in Hong Kong, you were just like the cool half Korean, half Japanese guy. <laughs> you're like, I'm killing it. You come to America, to, you're like, everybody I, wants to have on WhatsApp. I, I didn't even know I was half Korean until like two years ago. Oh. Dude, dude wait, my, mom told, my mom dropped the oh. bomb on my uh, on the Christmas dinner. I was asking my mom, I was like, mom, why do you hate Korean so much? And cause she's like, oh, cause they're, no, they lie, they steal, they cheat. I'm like, well, like come on, that's what? a very stereotypical answer. You can't, like, that's what a Korean person would say about Japanese people, Japanese people say about Korean people. And then we got this huge argument and she's like, if you hate Korean so much, why don't you marry someone like your dad? <gasps> and I said, wait, that's, that's how she broke it? Like yeah. in a movie line? Yeah, and I was like, I was sitting there, I was like, how does that logic make sense? Wait, and I was like, oh, wait, I'm actually half wait, are Korean. They, are they divorced? 
Yeah, they're divorced. They hate okay, each other. So they you, hate so each other. You didn't yeah. grow up with your dad. That's why. We grew up for or a number of years. Yeah. So I love my dad. I love my mom. You're but still in touch with your dad. But that's why that story makes sense. Dude, that's crazy. Oh my gosh. Yo, what is house? What Terrace house? That's Terrace. Terrace house. What a theatrical. What a theatrical mother. I think it's something I appreciate. I think it's something I respect, and I think it's something that I feel it's part of my identity. You know. Even though the Sony phones and the Japanese phones fell behind, the cameras like the Sony's we're using right now, Andrew still. Pretty much, oh, uh, I like the best yeah. out of them. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I, mean, I mean, you're only picking between Japanese brands, Canon, Panasonic, Sony, mm -hmm. Fujifilm. Yeah. Killing it at the camera. I don't think actually, like, I don't know if any of them are not Japanese. Because yeah. people know the fashion. We talk about Y3, Yoji Yamamoto, all Yo, the way to Babe yeah. to, uh, to, you gotta, to... You know what it is? You gotta hang out with like a Japanese grandma. That is a, Japanese that's grandma. a new way. <laughs> that's a culture that is not talked about. Uh, they're hilarious. So funny. They don't give a f um, They make great food. Their fashion also good. My grandma would wear like, yeah, like I don't I don't know where she. I mean, she died already, R.I.P. But uh, she would like just be wearing like a random babe shirt one day, and I was like, I, she must have gotten it at some like used clothing store or something. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, you gotta learn Japanese to hang out with them. But um, they're, they're great. They're great. Okay. Great so, companions. I mean, I don't know. I'm not very currently entrenched, but one thing I really appreciated recently is Japanese hip hop. Japanese hip hop is back on the rise again. J rap. Uh, Chinese people are, especially from Hong Kong and Taiwan, mm -hmm. are really big fans of J rap. Oh, like oh, really? You know why? You know why? Love because it, it, uh, I do think they like K rap too, but K rap sounds a little bit maybe too American for them. Mm -hmm. They like the laid back, less testosterone filled jazzy rap. Yeah. yeah. And is that that's the J rap you're referring kind of, to? Kind of, kind of. It's like it kind of influenced from that. There's a lot of good Japanese artists out there right now. One of my favorites is actually this New York Japanese artist called Miyachi. And he I've sings seen half, him. Yeah, oh, he's, he's, happy, yeah. he's happy. He's happy. I like him a lot. He's, he's yeah. popping out in Japan. He's like spitting half his verses in English and Japanese. Yes. I think stuff like that is really revolutionary to see. Is there any jealousy of how hot Koreans are right now? Because you guys used to be the hot East Asians. You know what's interesting? I, I think the young people don't give a f like my cousin's 17, he's on like some dance team and he's always posted on Instagram and he's like dancing to BTS songs. Young, that's what's so cool is like young people, they don't really have that weird complex, right? That comp the competitiveness. Yes, yeah, but when I go back, a lot of older Asian women or like just older Asian people were just like, oh, like, oh you're from New York or whatever. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. And they'll ask me like, oh, do you think um, Japan's losing to Korea? And I'm like, what does that mean? Like, <laughs> hey, <laughs> dude, I, I've had so, so many people ask me that and I, and I don't know if they mean like, because like, economically, I guess like no, but like you're talking about like soft it's power. Soft power, yeah, like, culturally. Yeah, I guess, but like it's such a weird. The coolest thing. East Asian title may have been lost in recent years. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it kind of it has. It's a but cycle. I think it's a cycle. It just it doesn't matter because people still like one piece. I don't know. Like I I don't know why we can't all be. Maybe I'm I'm privileged to say this, but like I think we can all be cool. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like you don't have to take a person down. You know what I mean? Just because people like. BTS doesn't mean they're not like watching anime and like into Japanese fashion mm. and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I heard? I heard because I actually involved in the uh, entertainment industry in Asia a little bit. They said that because Jan Japan has a 150 million population, yeah. they don't need to innovate as much because they have a domestic market that will consume. Yeah. Whereas Korea's yeah. always had a tiny population, so they always had to think super hard, import producers from everywhere, songwriters yes. from everywhere to create the most best global product ever because there simply wasn't enough money within their population. Yes, I've actually heard the same thing with like modeling. Japanese models don't really f with um, markets outside Japan because they don't need... They don't need right, them. it's more comfortable to operate yeah, in Yeah, and language. I think that's kind of the, the reason island, why it's Because it was such a big island, but then it didn't force people... Mm. It was like right at that size where they had the domestic market, but where they could totally survive, but then maybe also complacency to yeah. not push yeah. beyond. Remember the last time that j the Japanese uh, artist had like a number one was like Sukiyaki. That song was really big mm, in America. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 you know that song? Uh, How do you know that Actually, song? my mom knows That's that like old school, That's old school. Like but, but it was popular in America. Why? But they did also an English version. Oh, they, oh. You went away and now my life is just a rainy day. But um, but I, I think that was when Japanese culture was like You know what yeah, the interesting rocking. thing is? I think that Japanese sense of like picking, picking a fusion point and then building a culture out of it but not necessarily staying up day to day with the West, it's good for like fashion but then bad for music. So it's like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like you like need, certain mentalities yeah. are like better for yeah. different industries. That's because why, like, if you look at Korean fashion, it's kind of viewed as like not as unique. It's viewed as like Western fashion, but mm -hmm. cheaper, like Zara kind of. And then 
Japanese fashion is like on its own shit. I think Japan definitely had its peak back in the 80s, and that's why a lot of things didn't That's why that's when sushi came over in the 80s, when, you know, like I said, the rise of the automobile industry when Japan was economically prospering. I think that was its export period, and now it's Korea's turn to do that. You know, you have the massive rise of Samsung, and you have the massive rise of music in Korea, and I think uh, soon enough, China, I feel like, will come make a comeback. And I think it's just different phases of different eras that are kind of doing this Asian influence on the world. I love that. I thought it got really deep at the end. Real quick, you guys, what was your favorite thing? Because we have we had some fusion elements, we had some non-fusion elements on the food. This tebashaki wing, low key, Fire. that was way better than teriyaki. I don't know, Americans just got the teriyaki version. This was like teriyaki times. Uh, I was a big fan of the, the special karaage right here. Uh, I don't, I'm not, I didn't have the regular one, so I don't know what's so special. That's some it. sort of radish on it. Uh, it's daikon. It's got it's daikon, daikon on it, but it, it was real. It was real crunchy. It was real. It was real juicy. Juicy. I liked it. Real. I gotta give it to the pork man. That was soft, chewy, boiled perfectly, just melted in my mouth like Japanese curry. That's my comfort food right there. Man, I thought this was such a cool episode, and I think it's because like Japanese culture is so some aspect of it is so known to everybody. Yeah, yeah but it's so mysterious past the surface. Yeah, and, and there's such a kind of crazy history behind it all that um, I didn't grow up super into Japanese culture, like pop culture. I wasn't a weeaboo or a otaku at all. You mean like some people at church? Yeah, yeah some people at church. I gunned them a little bit, Dragon Ball Z a little bit, but I really wouldn't consider it, it on that level. But I like to think about Japan and like the future of it. Like that's always really fascinating to me. And uh, it's like the future of Asia and the future of Japan in particular, because it's always been like a futuristic place, so. The saying is like Japanese people, they always start with Japanese first. They say Japanese love work. They love the pursuit of artisanal perfection. Mm. Okay. Koreans, in their heart, at the base level, they love their country, they yeah. love their bloodline. They just, because it's a small group of people, you know, fierce. And Chinese, they say at the end of the day, yeah. they love money. Well, you know and that's a Chinese saying, so I'm, the, I'm just saying, do you see it? Uh, you know, I think that might have been true, but yo, we're trying to change that, right? We're trying to make Japanese people not work, okay? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't want He's that. He's like, yo, I'm a comedian. Yeah, you no. guys, thank you so much for doing this episode. Ryosuke, Fumi, Fumi, Ryosuke, thank you so much for uh, joining us on this episode of Culture Table. I hope you guys uh, took something away from it. All right, everybody, uh, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and thank you so much for watching. In the comments down below of this video, let us know what your favorite thing about Japanese pop culture is. Let it go, let us know in the comments down below. Thank you By so much. By the way, we will censor the X-rated ones. But what? Uh, just still leave it. Still leave it. Who knows? Yeah, right plug it. your guys' stuff. Yeah, Big shout out. Very funny. Uh, I, I call it the number one Asian podcast. Oh, thank you, man. Yes, I got a podcast called Asian Not Asian. Check it out. It's available wherever you get your podcast. And what do you got? You can check me out on Instagram, hoshiyama.r. I'm a filmmaking artist. I'll post content there. If people want to hit you guys with questions, that's okay. It's yeah, not just yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying yeah, hit me get up, back hit me to up. you. I'm also on Instagram at the Fumiabe. That's at T H U F U M I A B E. Man, I appreciate you guys so much for doing it, especially being so open. You guys didn't have to man. That was an amazing conversation. All right, everybody. Hope you guys enjoyed that. And until next time, we out. Peace. Here at Izakaya Jiraku, we have the largest selection of Japanese craft beers in North America. We currently have 57 beers, and at the end of the month, we should have 60. Yeah, just show us the craziest joints, man. The craziest is going to be from Hitachino. We have commemorative ales from them from a 2009 and a 2011. Oh, so you guys are treating beer like it's wine. What's the coolest sake you got? The coolest because sake is crazy because it has a human mind. Coolest drink. one is also gonna be by the same producer as the, the beer. This is Kyuchi's Taruzake. Uh, so it is aged in cedar. Yeah, if you want to check out everything else we're doing, please come down to Izakaya Jiraku. You can find us on Instagram at Izakaya Jiraku, as well as on Facebook, uh, Twitter. We're all out there, so check us out. Yo, Kyo, thanks for having us, bro. I appreciate Thank you. you, man. Pleasure.